welcome now we are officially starting and uh, we can start now engaging brethren we are now live and uh, I think it's only good that we start with a word of prayer at this moment so being the inaugural life weekly journal I think I'll lead in a word of prayer so let's pray as we welcome the Lord to lead us in the rest of this Father, in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, we come before your presence this day. We bless you, King of Glory. It's a moment we have worked so hard, O King of Glory, to see us, O God, to be able, O King of Glory, to reach out even to the global audience, O mighty God, to your children as far as the four corners of the earth, O God, that with this gospel, the gospel, O King of Glory, that you left us and you instructed us, O God, clearly that let this gospel of the kingdom be preached, then the end shall come. We pray that as we begin, let us start with you. Any technical hitches of God, we speak against them today. Let your mercies, let your grace be sufficient for us today. Even as we look forward to a moment of King of Glory, a moment of experience with the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, may you descend in this meeting. May you lead us, may you guide us, even for the topic of discussion, that we have said before you this day. We bless you and we give you glory and we give you honor, God. For you are worthy to receive all the glory and to receive all the honor. For it just might be interesting to you. Amen, amen, amen. Welcome, brethren. Welcome to the life, glorify our life with each other. And uh, it's a great day and I want to invite us to start transacting the topic of the day straight away. But before I do that, uh, for the purposes of the Facebook audience, it is also following us. It's only good that uh, we also invite and put them on board. At the moment, they may not be able to you know, call in directly, but I think as we go forward, that will be very possible. We shall be able to have live calling guests and all that. But at the moment, we have a restricted list of guests who are live already with us. And we should be able to bring up that on board shortly. And how I encourage our life in guests, those who are joining us on Telegram, that at least if you can be able to put up your image, if you can allow your camera to bring your image on board, that would be very great because it would be even easier for us to transmit you as you speak. But that's not really a requirement, but it's good if you can. So for our Facebook Glowfire family, welcome on board. Today we have a very interesting topic to discuss and uh, before probably I do that, it's only prudent that uh, I invite our uh, life in guests also to make an introduction as we go forward. Thank you. But, but I think I think right now right now it's working. It's good. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm so sorry about that. I'm so sorry about that. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. That's beautiful now. Yeah. Thank you. At least we got this one right off at the beginning before it was a bit late. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You can go ahead. Uh, my brother Matthew, now you can go ahead, sir. Okay. Well, my brothers and sisters, as we start this discussion today on surrogacy, let's start by knowing what is the meaning of surrogacy. And what is the process that is involved? And was this process there from the beginning of the creation of the earth? And how did it come about? Is it in alignment with God? It has brought a lot of controversies in the body of Christ. There are people that are for it. There are people against it. But the most important thing is, is what God stands. What is God's stand on this matter? Is what is important above all. From my understanding, sorry, guess it is a process where a woman is being used as a vessel to carry children for somebody else. The man does not actually have intercourse with this person, the surrogate, but the collection of sperms will be collected and injected into the woman, and the woman will carry the child, and based on the contract, once the child is born, the woman should not have any relationship with this child because this child is now belong to this new family. 
and she will be paid and she walked away. From where I am from in America, there are a lot of people, women, are now making business out of surrogacy. Because people, there are people out there that have money and they will say, oh, I don't want to destroy my body. I want to keep my shape and so and so. So they will rather pay somebody to carry the child for them or they don't want to go through the pregnancy process, the pain of being pregnancy. So they rather pay somebody to carry the child so they can prevent and preserve their bodies and their shape. And there are some, it could be something else, they may not be able to, call, they may not be able to be pregnant or conceived, so they will go through the surrogacy for them to have. This is my understanding, but I'll rest my submission to hear other people's understanding of surrogacy and the process that's involved. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, brother Matt, your submission on that. Uh, let's keep the discussion going, please. Um, anyone wants to take it next? May I share? Absolutely, go ahead, Sister Anna. Okay, okay. First, we need to go back to the very beginning, okay? We know that marriage was established by God between a man and a woman, okay? And we know that when Isaac uh, married uh, Rebecca, they were married and then they consummated the marriage. How do you consummate the, the marriage? Through what? Through the intercourse, okay? And the two shall become one flesh, the word of God says. Okay? Uh, there's different kinds of surrogacy. Okay? One where they were the were uh marriage, they one of them they they can uh, either the woman can or the man can. Sometimes what they do it's uh they uh, would get the mixtures of the sperm and the egg and they put it together and then they impregnate the, the female that is gonna carry the child, okay? They, uh, they rent, in other words, the womb of another woman. That's one, okay? And there's different ones and right now, Something that seems so innocent is going beyond. We have uh, different artists, okay? Famous people like Ricky Martin. You can look it up online. This uh, Latin American man, he's gay, okay? He did a uh, surrogacy. Uh, he got his sperm mixed with somebody else's eggs and uh, he rented the, the uterus of a female and he's gay. And now guess what? His children are gay. So something that started so innocent, like someone wanting to be a parent, now is going out of control and out of proportion because it's going outside of God's will. Because the Bible says, that a child, not everybody, not every woman is meant to be a mom. I have met women that they don't, for whatever reason, they're not able to bear children, but they're teachers, they're so loving, kind, or coaches or something like that. And they are like mothers of many, 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 many children because through their love and their kindness and their inspiration, they have touched so many lives. I believe that God's plan is that he wants everybody to be happy. But what we need to understand is that for God's will to be done in our lives, sometimes we want something that probably God himself doesn't want for us. What about if, you, if God has a different plan what what's wrong with people nowadays is they take they make decisions 
if they don't consult with what God wants. They want their agenda and they want it now. Look at Sarah, what happened with Sarah. She went outside of God's will. God had promised that he was going to bless them with the promised child, which was Isaac. And what did she do? She didn't wait for God's sensor. She took it upon herself and told Abraham to go and sleep with one of the mates that they had. And they bear a child. And what happened? Once she became pregnant, she was trying to get rid of the other woman and the other child. So was that God's will for Sarah? No. She took it upon herself to play the role of God. And when people do that, many consequences happen. And right now, to today, remember the other child was named Ishmael. We still having problems. Look what hap what's going on right now with Israel and the Hamas and all that stuff. Because even God said that Ishmael was going to be, it's on the Bible, you can look it up that he was going to be like a jackass. Everywhere that he went, he will cause conflict. He will cause problems. God still bless him. And look, if you look at the history, God bless those people. They have one of the richest lands in the world with oil and all that stuff, which is the people in the Middle East. And until today, they still fighting for the land with the Palestinians and all that stuff. So the question is, are you trying to play the role of God or are you accepting the will of God? There's different ways. Only because a woman gives birth to a child, it doesn't make her more woman than somebody else that cannot bear, uh, bear a child, okay? So there's other ways you can do adoption you can do many different things. So uh, I believe that nowadays they're trying to, the technology is so advanced that they will no longer need a woman's womb for a child to be born. Now they have artificial, they already developed them. So in the Bible, it says that technology and science would advance to the degree that is going to be replacing human beings. And we can see it now. Now they're trying to replace a woman. They're making a human toy. Uh, I think that's how it's called. Uh, the robots that you can purchase those for like for $40,000. And those robots are able for a, hu a male human being to penetrate that robot, okay, I'm sorry, I have to be very uh, graphic, but uh, to have sex with that robot. So it's like, it's really leading to all this kind of perversion in my, uh, in my view, but everyone has, um, has the right to think and discern things in different perspective, but we know that the discernment that is true is only the one that comes from the Holy Spirit. What we think, what we feel is way different of what God has already established because two shall become one. And wouldn't that be an illegitimate uh, son or daughter that will be born? Think about that. If God established, remember, the Bible talks about the curse of the bastard, which it goes from three to four generations. Three to four generations, the curse of the bastard. Wouldn't that make that child to be outside of marriage? Because you are impregnating. Uh, Sometimes they get the, the egg out of that woman and mix it with another person. And then they don't know anything about it. They just, you know, they just bring in this child. And aren't you going to give an account for every child that you bear, even if it's not yours? 
because only because God created us and people say, oh, it's my body, you know, like abortion, for example, it is not her body. The Bible says that we are the temple of God to the believers. Of course, if you're not a believer, you're not a temple of God, because the Bible says that there's two different two different kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. Whenever we accept Jesus Christ in our hearts, what happens? We are translated from the kingdom of darkness into what? Into the kingdom of God, which is the kingdom of light. So I feel that surrogacy is against God's will. And I, I feel that, uh, and I believe, I'm sorry, I believe that everyone should seek God and ask him directly to do his will and not what we want. Sometimes what we want is not what God wants for us, okay? So that's what I have to share. Like, for example, wouldn't that be an illegitimate uh, son or daughter because he would be born outside of wedlock? And plus, what do men have to do in order to get the sperm out? They have to masturbate. And what does the Bible say regarding masturbation? It's a sin. Because remember the guy that in the old times, if, uh, if a male died, the female had to take the husband of the brother. And he continued, right? So this guy in the Bible, he didn't want to do that. So he masturbated and he threw his seed, the Bible says, and onto the ground. And then what happened to him? God killed him. God killed him because he didn't want to leave the inheritance to, to the, for the name for the brother to continue. So whenever uh when i worked at the at the hospital many years ago um i worked in the department of cancer and the other department that was next to us was uh regarding the reproductive system and fertility and stuff and what do they do in those places because sometimes i had to help them if somebody wasn't in their staff and they give pornographic um, magazines to the men. They go there and they will donate the sperm. They will sell it, okay? Wouldn't that be against God's um, plan? Selling the sperm? Ask all these questions, brothers and sisters. Ask all these questions. So they will give them magazines or watch videos so they can masturbate. And then they will give their their seed and who knows to who. What about if they give that seed to a homosexual couple, for example, and that little seed supposed to be a prophet and it ends up in a family that is not going to do the will of God. Ask all these questions, my brother. Let's not just take all the the butterflies and the rainbows that that the uh, the countries give, especially America, which is so perverted. And I'm sorry, I, I, I live in this country. I love this country. But uh, that's why judgment is coming to America because of all these um, abominable things that this nation is doing. And all their countries and nations are being contaminated through this nation of America. I passed the time now. Yes, yes. Thank you, Sister Anna, for that. We really appreciate your contribution on this topic, especially as experience as a nurse. And uh, it's quite an interesting topic. I'm looking and I'm so excited. And I hope uh, as we continue our presentations and our views on this topic will help someone out there and uh, i think uh, now we can have our next uh, call-in guest and uh, who is next who wants to take it up next brethren
Brother Kevin. Brother Kevin is not here. Oh, praise Jesus. I first had to mute uh, the live on Facebook because I was trying to monitor and ensure the sound is good. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, on the topic of surrogacy, I don't have much to say because uh, um, I think mostly it's because I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not maybe that qualified to speak on it uh, based on my marital status, mostly. But of course, I have an opinion. I mostly agree with what Sister Sister Anna said concerning all the processes that have to be done to end up with the finished product, which is a baby on another person's womb, you know, especially on how now the seed of the man now comes to the woman. Of course, now that raises lots of questions and lots of concerns concerning now the morality of the whole issue, you know, and also I also agree with her when she talks about the will of God and and uh, the issue of childbearing and how not everyone not everyone probably is cut out to be a mother or a parent and uh, sometimes it's just God's will for couples just to stay without a child and uh, you know and serve God in other ways. Uh, apart from child rearing or raising a godly offspring. And also she did give a few, you know, like uh, options concerning adoption and whatnot. So, of course, um, of course, there are, there are concerns when it comes to for childless couples who are in the faith. And of course, many people would ask, isn't surrogacy one of the ways God would use to bless a couple with a child you know just the same way um if someone has an issue with one body part and they are using and they and they and they want to be donated an organ isn't that the same thing so many people would ask that kind of a question so isn't surrogacy almost the same you know uh process or you know like a situation when someone has an issue with their kidney and they want a, a kidney from someone else. So will donating a kidney to that person be also considered sin or a gray area in the Christian faith? You know, of course, they are different. They're different. They are sort of different. But remember, in this both in both of these scenarios, uh, there's a there's an issue of organ failure. So the woman's womb has failed to to carry a child and on this other end the person's kidney has failed to you know to to do what it's supposed to do so is it considered also a sin just is just as in the case of surrogacy so that's that is one of the issue one may by trace when we talk about surrogacy and when we say that it is ungodly of course, with all the evidence uh, put forth uh, by Brother Matt and Brother and, and Sister Anna, definitely when you look at it keenly and the original plan, God's original plan of how a man and a woman shall, you know, like become one through cleaving in intimacy, it raises concerns, you know, how now you have a, a baby from... In, with a different person you know but then this is something i want us to think about in regard to comparing these two scenarios so would it also be considered a sin if someone was to be donated a different organ or something uh would it also fall in the same sphere of uh, surrogacy we know jehovah witnesses have issues with blood transfusion and i think also maybe organ transplants i'm not really sure but also what what's what's the church stand in the case of this issue on 
organ transplant. Is it the same as surrogacy? I'm just trying to compare the two, not try to deviate from the point, but I'm just trying to compare the two. If we say that surrogacy is not of God, uh, is organ transplant of God? And do they serve almost the same purpose when it comes to, you know, like surrogacy and organ transplant? Yeah, that's my submission. Over to you, Brother Zach. Thank you, Brother Kevin. Thank you. Today you are so brief. If I think this is not the first time we are actually having to discuss this. It just come to my attention. And uh, it's just for the benefit of those who are not part of the discussion previously. And I remember your comments then were so passionate and uh, so strong. Today you are very soft <laughs> for some reason. Uh, could it be because the audience is big? I don't know. But uh, <coughs> the comments are very much well received. Actually, um, I really appreciate your comments on this. I was looking forward to them. And uh, they are quite insightful. It's a very controversial topic, as you are aware. And uh, that's why we'd like to discuss the most controversial. And we'd like to put our minds on them. And hopefully by our discussion we can be able to be enlightened we can be able to see the light in all this and uh, please feel appreciated and we really appreciate very much so let's continue uh, i don't know if sister purity her dose here is ready i think uh, it's your floor right now sister purity welcome Sister Purity. Yes. Welcome, madam. Thank you. I really don't have much to say because I'd said most of the stuff of the things that I was to say last time. But just to make um, um a general comment, um I first want to tell Brother Kelvin to make a clear stand because I think I don't really understand <laughs> I don't really understand his very well last time it appears as if he had another opinion maybe he has changed his mind i don't know but now to address the whole thing um what i think about it um um honestly i think that whatever sister anna is saying about the gays the what what is true and it's things that happen okay it's it's things that happen realistically but i seem to see things again from a different side and i also think about what you shared sister anna concerning onan i don't think he was masturbating according to the bible he just didn't do he didn't do what he was supposed to do he was supposed to sire a seed he was supposed to bring up a child for his brother but he ended up spilling the seed outside instead of doing what he was supposed to do to get a child so um i don't think that is really masturbation because yeah masturbation is literally like yeah making love to yourself if i can call it that and so concerning um the the issue of uh surro surrogacy and mm -hmm. all that um there is there's as Sister Anna has shared people masturbate to get a seed. Some people masturbate to get a seed to do all that, um, which is really bad. But I don't think it's all people who have to masturbate to get um, a seed to, to, to do all that. For me, when I talked last time, I approached it in the, what, in the technological way to use artificial wombs. And I don't think that's wrong. Anything is wrong with that. And as Sister Anna say that it may not be the will of God, um, 
I can't be really sure about that because that means that you have consulted God to know his will. And then because I don't think God is like a formula where you apply everything when a similar concept comes across. So nobody really knows the mind of God except his spirit. So um, I don't think it's wrong to do that according to me. And I don't think that if you have a child, it's okay for you to think that what is wrong with this person go to the um, children's home take a child settle you can't give birth accept yourself but until you are in that situation that you cannot give birth and i know we are giving all sorts of examples including abraham but him he later gave birth and he was on a timeline he was waiting on god that's different from you know like being hopeless and last time i shared a story of a um Someone I know, very prayerful, but they don't have a child. And if you are in their shoes, then you would know it's not something easy. It's not a walk in the park to go and pick a child and say, ah, it's not the will of God. And I don't believe, I'm not, this is according to me, I don't believe God has, um, has put on someone to be barren. I don't believe that. I think it's something, first of all, I think it could be demonic. Because even the people, that the wombs that were barren in the Bible, they ended up giving birth. The likes of Rachel, the likes of uh, Samuel's mother, all of them, they ended up giving birth. And in the book of Deuteronomy, one of the things that God told them um, is that if you worship me, if you have no other God before you and worship me only, he said, I will provide for you food and water. And number two, I will remove barrenness from you. So um, if you see that, like, that clearly means that the barrenness had come as a result of idolatry. So I don't really believe it's God's will to deprive someone of a child. He said, multiply and fill the earth. And that's what I strongly believe is God's will. So um, in the looking of... Uh, the do's and don'ts in terms of surrogacy and all that, I don't think it is entirely evil. It's just the approach. It's just like anything. Someone can misuse a drug. Morphine is used to, in, to, to do surgery and all that in cases of extreme pain, but some people do abuse the drug and take it. So is, is the drug itself wrong? No, but the abuse of the drug is wrong. Um, Concerning um, um, surrogacy and all that, I, I, I don't know the medicality about it. Maybe Brother Matt and Sister Anna, because you have a medical background, you can explain. What I really want to understand is, is does it always have to be, you know, um, intimate union between someone and carrying someone's seed carrying yeah just carrying someone's seed without you know um how without intercourse does that bring about an illegitimate baby without intercourse just carrying someone's seed yeah Brother Zach, yes. can I come in? Yeah, sure, 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 sir. Thank you. And thank you, sister. All right. Thank you, sister. Purity, for that contribution. Very much appreciated. So, uh, my brothers and sisters, it's a very delicate topic that we have to be very vigilant and sober minded and very discernful. Now, let's take it back from the beginning. God created a man and a woman. And then he told them they can be fruitful and multiply. Yes, at that time, technology was not as advanced as it is today. And the way that God made this to happen, it was through a man and a woman to be intimate and then fertilization takes place in the womb. And then they have a child. Most of the time, the way God has taught me a lot of things, he has always used an animal. He used animals as an example to teach me a lot of things. He used kids and animals. 
So whenever I come to look at something, I always go back to the animal kingdom and look and see if something has changed. And how he has changed. Has God changed his ways? So in the, in the situation of Abraham and Sarah, Sarah was young, old. Yes, the womb was locked. But is there anything God cannot do? Even though the womb was blocked, when the time was right, God opened the womb and then Sarah received and conceived. Sarah could have went ahead and did something else. Which she ended up doing and which brought consequences upon her life. And even we today, we are still facing the consequences of polygamy. Because of what has happened. So whatever we do has a consequence. Now the scripture says, there's everything in the world, but not everything is edifying. There's everything in the world, but not everything is sanctifying. There are certain things in this world that will pull you out from the will and the purpose of God. In the book of Psalm 127, verse, Psalm 127 I believe it says, it, Children are the heritage of God. So God knows. And there are some people that are born because God said in the book of, uh, He said, from the beginning of the foundation of the earth, I knew you, I formed you, and I have a purpose for you. So before God even created you, He knows what your life is going to be and how it's going to be and how it's going to move on and everything. So my brothers and sisters, when we come to this matter, there are some that are born to be Enoch. There are some that made themselves to Enoch. There are, you know, there are some that will become. You go back and look at Rachel and her sister Leah. Leah was just pumping out children like nobody's business, but she wasn't able to. Now, sister, just to answer to sister Purity, in the case of Moses, when, when, when David came out from war and he was dancing, so much that his wife said, David, why are you disgracing me? The Lord locked up her womb. And the Lord locked up her womb and she never produced any child. That was not a demon. That was God himself. The Lord locked up her womb because David was praising and giving glory unto God. And she wanted to stand in the way of that. Can God lock up a woman's womb? Yes, he can. Can he open it? Yes, he can. Likewise, since we're on this very issue, there was a woman I encountered with. I was having a conversation with her. She said she had seven children. When she was done having the seven children, the Lord locked up her womb. She did not have any more children, even though she was having unsafe sexual practices. She never used any IUD or any medication, but the Lord locked up the womb. She did not conceive again until today. Now she's old. I think she's already past her, um, whatever stage women go through, monopause, mon monopause, she's already past that stage. So God has an ability to do what he can do. Now, in this case of surrogacy, you find yourself in a situation like this. My advice would be to anyone, go and pray and ask the Lord what the Lord wants you to do. But changing the way God has destined for a child to be born and changing it to something else is disobedience and rebellion. Now, if the Lord directs you, say, you are free to go and do this pathway, you, you will obey the Lord. If as long as God directing you, but if you do it out of your own way, oh, I want this, I want that, now I'm going to go this pathway. Be careful of rebellion and disobedience unto the Lord. And we also, we also have to understand that technology has become so advanced that not all technology, not all practices are of the Lord as well. Not all technology and practices are of the are of God. Even the medications that they made, not all medications are made for the well-being of the people. 
They made some medication that just make you go cuckoo and make you crazy and make you lose your mind because the pharmaceutical world wants to make money. The pharmaceutical world is not about fearing God, but the pharmaceutical world is about going against what God can do. The pharmaceutical world is like it's like it's no war. They are in no war with God. They want to do what God can do. They want to challenge God. So we have to keep that in mind that they are always at war with God. So they are looking for means that they can fight against God to tell God God cannot do. They can do what God can do. So if you find yourself in a situation, you can't have a child. I've heard of women that even the womb was removed. Their womb was but the Lord made them pregnant. The Lord blessed them with children. Because, they... okay, because the Lord blessed them. They prayed poverty and seek the Lord in faithfulness. In faithfulness. And the Lord opened the womb again. And they got pregnant again. Even I don't know if it's on the new, but I think the voice went a bit a little bit down, brother Matt. It just changed a little okay. a minute ago. I don't know if it's uh, on. Let me, let me, let me, is it just me? me? Is it just me? So, can you guys hear me now? That's so, better. Even though the womb was removed by the doctor, and the same doctors confirmed that she's pregnant, and she was not. The doctor could not believe it. Like, how did you get pregnant when I took the womb out? And she said, Oh, do you believe in miracles? My father, who art in heaven, did it for me. So, my brothers and sisters, no matter what situation or circumstance we found ourselves, we should not go in the contrary way that is not of God. If we just walk in the way of the Lord and trust and believe in Him, He is bound to do the undoable, He's bound to do the impossible. And in, in addition to what Sister Anna was saying, yeah, people are doing all this masturbation. Some don't masturbate. Some will sleep with their wife. And when it's time to ejaculate, they will come out and ejaculate in whatever container they gave to them to gather the sperm and take it in. But here's a problem. There's blood involved as well. Now, a woman carry your child. The placenta is involved. There is a covenant with the placenta and the umbilical cord. There are covenants. Now, your child is not covenanted with this woman whose placenta and whose um, umbilical cord was connected and bind them together. It's a very intricate topic that we have to be very careful about and know how we go about it and how we approach it. If anyone asks me, come to me, should I go and do it? I would tell them, go and ask the Lord and seek his face. If the Lord approves you, yes. But if he says no, do not do it. Do not follow the crowd. And this is what happened today in the world. We are following the crowd and Daddy. walking contrary to the will of yeah. God. Over to you, Brother Zach. Thank you, Brother Matt. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Thank you for speaking your mind on this. Um, brethren, I know it's a very interesting topic, and I know uh, right now we have, uh, I'm sure, you know, prepared ourselves to really get to the bottom of this. But I think um, noteworthy, uh, one thing that I know most Christ Christians will nearly agree that um, you know most forms of surrogacy are theologically and morally problematic it's quite a very divisive topic as you know so basically um, some will say it's the exploitation of women you know it's like you're renting out your womb you know it's more of like uh, you know selling the children you know more bordering on uh, you know, violation of the sanctity of m the marital covenant, because we we understand that uh, the originator of the family is God Himself. But we have reinvented ourselves around that. So I'm I'm taking one perspective on this, and uh, if I may just take this on a little bit more further, 
if you look at the statistics actually from the United States, they show that you know, for you to get a surrogate mother, you need to pay anywhere probably between, let me say, on average of $20,000 to $25,000. Uh, that translates to approximately $3 per hour. You know, uh, now if you calculate for the entire duration of those nine months, it comes to that average of around twenty to twenty-five thousand U.S. dollars. So, it comes down to more like those with the financial means. They are not willing to undergo the pain and the trauma, you see, and the you know that comes with the motherhood, but they are willing to rent, to rent, to 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 go out there and pay the low income, you know those who have um, those who are financially indebted so that they can be surrogates for them and uh, that's one aspect I know it's not entirely the only thing why probably we have surrogacy I think previously not today brother Kevin discussed on I don't know if it's brother Kevin or someone else I'm just trying to remember you discussed on how you know that surrogacy helps people who cannot conceive. I don't know who that really brought up that who cannot conceive. And in a way, you are like, okay, um, maybe, maybe it's a good thing and all that. Um, but I think we need to look at it uh, from a holistic perspective. Uh, one, um, the motive, as I've already said, there is a financial motive, and that cannot be overemphasized that those who have the means and those who don't uh, some 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 people whereas they have the capability i do not have the statistics on uh, the mothers or those uh, who seek the surrogacy like their financial well-being if at all like they have a problem conceiving in the first place and more of like it's a celebrity thing like the people with the means are the people who pay those without the means to be able to carry and if you look at it from that perspective you could see uh, there is a problem here there is certainly a problem here but also in a different perspective is that you are helping someone someone who is not able to give birth all right to be able to give birth so it's quite a very interesting and divisive topic but um, I don't want to make uh, my final comments on this it's only uh, prudent that we continue to discuss and probably towards the end uh, it will just emerge from a discussion where we are leaning or probably how the Lord wants us to uh, arrive at this topic. So anyone else who feels uh, they want to make some meaningful contribution to this topic, please? My yes, brothers. Please. Yes, my sister Anna. There's a scripture in 1 Samuel 1 5, and it says, But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion. Just a moment. Okay. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. Just like our brother was saying, um, sometimes God shuts down the womb. And sometimes there's certain blessings that we have to fight in the spirit. As we know, for example, Sarah, she had problems conceiving. Rachel had problems conceiving. Hannah had problems conceiving. Elizabeth had problems conceiving. Elizabeth in the in the New uh, Testament. She was related to to Mary. We know. So all this, um, all these people. You know, because like whenever there is a prophet, an evangelist, 
an apostle or anything like that, they're always signs, as we know. Look what happened regarding Moses. Look what happened when uh, with Jesus. Look what happened with uh, John the Baptist. There's like a lot of different uh, things that happen in the realm of the spirit when a child of God that has a great divine purpose to be born, especially during these last days. Look at the rate of uh, abortion uh, in America. The topic is kind of going down because the one that is taking over now, it's sodomy which is the transsexual, the bisexuals, all the transgender agenda has completely taken over now. And now they are making laws, passing laws, that uh, transgenders or homosexuals or gay people, they're able to adopt and to do all these things. And... Uh, like Sister Purity was saying also, regarding that sometimes the enemy can shut the wound of somebody. It's true also. Satanists do that. Sometimes they bury the wound of a woman. So she's, uh, she's not able to conceive. But like I said before, and like Brother uh, Matthew was saying, there's nothing impossible for God. But the problem with people nowadays, they want a microwave answer. They just put in the food in, you know, for two or five seconds and boom, it's ready. And in the realm of the spirit, things doesn't work like that. Sometimes you have to fight for your, for your blessings for many years. Look at Sarah, how long it took her to conceive. And she was giving up of the promise of what God has said. And she took it upon herself. There's consequences when people try to play the role of God. Or when they try to take the place of God and do their own thing. And then when trouble comes, who do they blame? They blame God. And we know that that's not true. The thing is that people gave up. And what does the Bible say? The unbelievers, they're not going to make it. What's the opposite of believing? Unbelievers. So that means that people that are lacking faith, they're not going to make it. Because this is this journey of the kingdom of God is not for cowards, the Bible says. Cowards are not going to make it either. It's for people that are brave. Remember how uh, in Gideon, Gideon, he didn't feel that he didn't, he never felt like he was brave. And what did God told him? What did God say to Gideon? Does anybody know? He saw, he didn't see him as Gideon saw himself. God saw him with the eyes of the full potential. Like, for example, I wanted four children. God only gave me two. So does that mean I'm going to be mad at God? I know what it feels like. And let me tell you, both pregnancy were very difficult. I almost died with both of them with both of my boys. But you know what? We, as if we truly say that God is our Lord, we can't be getting mad at God. Remember in the book of Job, it says, what, you only going to accept the good and not the bad? Sometimes it's not God's will. But people, they want, they're determined that they want to do what they want and how they want it, you know? And then when trouble comes, 
they want God to fix all the twisted path that they in the mess that they have made for themselves. I know people that have adopted uh, children from other families. And I know people that have never had children too. I have seen from both sides, but for I can speak for my personal life. My both of my pregnancies were very difficult. Even the doctor told me that I should not even try to have any more children after my first one. They wanted to to take my wound out. I told them no. I was young. I was young and I trusted God. God knows what we need. I wanted four, but he gave me two. And some people only get one and other people get many, many, many of them. We need to trust God's will. Whenever we think in our human reasoning, sometimes you cannot see the whole picture. But one day, all things shall be revealed unto us. Having children does not make you a better woman than another woman. It might feel painful. People might feel depressed. I do understand that. I do understand that. But whenever we say that we love God, we have to accept his will. So God is the one that opens the wound and he can shut it down. But on the other hand, uh, Satan, uh, through his, um, through their agents, they can shut down a wound too. But who's more powerful, the creator or the creation? God always win at the very end, but we must trust him completely. The Bible says that without wavering, that we should be not like the, a house that is built on the sand, but the one that is built with brick, with the rock, which rock represents Christ. Because it says when the waves come, it will wash the one that was made on the sand. It will wash it away. And that's what happens when people, they don't have their roots deep down in faith in God. If your roots are not deep, you're not going to make it. They have to be all the way to the, to the bottom, all the way. Your roots. That's why God, uh, it says in the book of Colossians 2, 7, let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. We have to have our roots all the way down. In the book uh, of Psalms, it says that we should be like a tree that is planted by what? By the waters. That is always green. That he always gives its fruit in season and off season. So that's the question. If you are deeply rooted in God, if God doesn't give you children... You're going to praise God no matter what, with children or without children. When we are rooted, but if you are not rooted, then the woman can become bitter and nasty. And if you're bitter and nasty, guess what? There's no room for you in heaven. There is no room for sin. No room. Because if you, for example, the fig tree, the fig tree from far away, it had an appearance. It had an appearance that it looked like it had fruit. 
But once Jesus got close to it, guess what? It was green, it looked pretty, but what? It had no fruit. And God says in the word of God that if you do not bear fruit, the the axe is at the root and he will cut it off and he's going to burn it and it's going to be thrown into hell, into the fire. So are we bearing fruit? Are we are rooted down into him that our faith will grow strong? And we will overflow with thankfulness with an open wood or with a shutdown wound. Are we still going to praise God in the midst of whatever is going? And this is not just about an open or a shutdown wound. This can apply for anything in life. Only because you're not having or receiving the desires that you have in your heart. He says in the word of God. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Are you delighting yourself in the Lord that whatever you are seeking, he will grant it to you? Because God is love, he's merciful, he's loving. But the question is, are you becoming bitter because you're not getting your way? Maybe you're seeking to have another child and your wife is not able to. What about he might not want you to have another baby, but he wants to give you the baby of a ministry. What Have you asked yourself that? So I passed the time uh, to Brother Zachary. Let's think about that. Are we rooted down into Christ? Like Colossians 2, 7 says, or we just like a fig tree that is it's from far away. It only has an appearance, but it has no fruit. Is anything that you seeking of God and you asking God and he hasn't granted to you. Remember, the word of God says that those that persevere until the end shall be safe. Are you persevering in your path? Or are you just ready to throw down the towel because you're not getting what you want? This doesn't only apply for an open wound or a shutdown wound. God will bring it to light that this is why I did this, this is why I did this. Yeah, only that we need to have a, a fruit of patience in us and a fruit of focus on him. And knowing that he can do everything and anything for our good. Yeah, thank you. I beg to submit. Thank you, Brother Michael. Very much appreciated. Does it seem to me that uh, today the voice that is coming out so clearly, Sarah, as he should not be admitted to Sarah? Brother Kevin. Brozak? Yeah, sure. Sorry? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I just heard you saying, I, I, I think you were talking about the voice, so I didn't get that last part. Sorry, can you hear me right now? Yeah, I can get you. Good. I'm asking, does it appear like mm -hmm. the voice that is coming out so clearly that surrogacy should not be acceptable, should not be acceptable at all to the Christian faith. Now, to be honest, this is a very controversial topic. And uh, based on the majority here, that's what is coming out. And they have very good reasons for it, I must admit. So, yeah, I feel... I feel that's the the majority of the voice. I think now it's up to the people who are opposing to bring up their case or to answer up. 
Over to you, Brother Zach. Today you have decided to be very brief. Um, but <laughs> for some reason, today you are so brief. The passion <laughs> that I saw last time is not there. <laughs> but it's alright. <laughs> uh it's anyway uh sister purity i'm still not contented i want we need to close this we need to close this one now uh, sister purity can you make your final remarks please before i come to brother matt um i have Yes, I have listened from each person's submission carefully. And maybe the remarks I can make even as we conclude is that I have listened people saying a matter of patience or impatience. And like I said before, you can never really be able to quantify patience according to your own terms. Because that's what is normally assumed that people who go for surrogacy are impatient and for this case i'm looking at a christian's life not for a person out there in the world doing their own things no i'm looking at the life of a christian so this is, means this is a person who's serious with their work with god so they sometimes we assume things and uh, it's because maybe we are not in that shoe to be able to know Number two, I made a, one assumption I have seen run all across is that um, technology mostly is bad and it's a worldly perspective. In fact, someone says that someone mentioned that the knowledge of the ancestors, what they were doing things in the past is what was the right way. And whatever is being done nowadays with technology is evil and does not come from God. According to me, that is a fallacy. A fallacy is a statement that appears to be true, but it's not. The Bible says all good things come from the Father of lights. What I believe that is that all knowledge comes from God, except some things have been perverted by the enemy. Um, a few years ago, we didn't. There, were, there did not used to be a phone to communicate, but right now we can communicate. And it's true, there's a lot of evil being done by the phone. People watch pornography, like all kinds of evil. But does that mean the phone was wrong? And if we go way, way back, people used to, you know, give birth normally. And if you can't be able to, you just die. Nowadays, people can do cesarean. So does that mean cesarean is wrong? Because now, you know, it's not perfect will the way a child is supposed to come out. And so maybe you can uh, either pray and pray and pray and give birth normally. And there are people who do that. But can we assume that those who, you know, give in to cesarean, they don't have enough faith? You know, sometimes you can have assumptions, but it takes, it takes experience to be able to know something. The same way maybe things concerning other spiritual aspects like warfare. People talk a lot of rumors, but it takes experience to be able to know something. It takes a situation of lacking a child to know that person's mind, to, you know, to know what they are going through. And we can give the example of uh, Abraham and Sarah. But Abraham, they were um, waiting on God. They were on an instruction. So according to me, that was deliberate disobedience because they were on an instruction to wait on God. And actually all the God instigated um, blocking wombs in the Bible, God opened them up, except um, someone talked about Michal. I don't know if she's called Michal, the, the husband of, the wife but, of uh, but David. Before you, before you go forward, sorry for interrupting, Sister Purity. We understand where yes. you have said that uh, Abraham, was under deliberate instruction so uh, to wait on god yeah. that uh, god will mm -hmm. actually give him a son with sarah right uh, you also understand yes. that abraham is the father of all nations and that's the promise god gave 
and actually the fat of faith. That is, so if any man was to be, if any man was to ever have faith, then Abraham was the ultimate guide. He is the dictionary. He is the encyclopedia of faith. He, he was the most ultimate, the person who gave his only son. And, and God made that promise. And there is no other man in the Bible that received that promise, actually. It's only Abraham that did. So if you say Abraham was deliberately, uh, you know, I mean, given that promise, is also not the promise also to us. And I think Paul makes reference to that, that this promise, the blessings of Abraham, is also to us who believe, who have faith. All right? So I think I just needed to point that one out. I don't know how you can really be able to uh, explain yourself around that. Um, maybe I would just ask a question. It's true you have said we can, we can use that um, to affirm us, our Christian faith based on Abraham and all that, but it doesn't really always go that way. There are people and there are Christians, they end up dying without having a child. So can we say that God was negligent on his promise? You know, like Jeremiah said, have you become water that fails? Have you become a deceptive brook? Can we say that God, you know, failed on his promise to these people? They, you know, this world has a lot of things, but that that does not negate the glory of God. We have to agree that they, there's a lot of situations that come up in life, a lot of them. And some of them don't really go in the line of faith that we expect that we will pray and this will happen. They all, not all of them go that way. Some do and we glorify God, but some don't. And we also glorify God. What I am saying is that sometimes God can work in a way you don't expect. You can pray for healing and you don't get that healing. You have to go to the hospital and through that you get healing. Does that mean you lacked faith and maybe you could have roared in tongues the whole night and get healing in the morning? Sometimes God works in a way we do not expect. And sometimes he uses things that we don't expect, things that we are not formalized to, or the way that we don't, we will not expect him to work. As the Bible says, can anyone read the mind of God? So what I'm saying is we cannot substantiate or quantify the mind of God based on our thinking. What I think about the whole thing now as I sum up is that the whole thing about technology is God's mind. People can pervert it and that's to their judgment. But what I think is if something can be used for good, let it be used for good. Even if it may bring evil, but if it can bring good, God still will be glorified at the end. Because even if people do that, it takes God's hand to create life. Life does, does not just originate from anywhere. It takes the hand of God to do the whole thing. Yes, that's my submission. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Purity. I really appreciate it. I think that was quite well articulated. Hmm. And, uh, um, of course, especially in fact, if when you gave the example of the hospital, it's a true case, actually. Uh, there are some regions out there or can we call that religiosity, whatever you call it. They say, if you go to hospital, you're sinning. Uh, if you get a syringe and all that, you're sinning. You don't need all that medication. And actually, most of these are in Africa, where we actually come from. Um, we have some of, like, African Divine Church, ADC, and uh, some other, I don't have to mention their names here, some ministries which are, so they don't believe that you need to go to hospital and all that and uh, for mm -hmm. us we believe that we need to go to hospital i think it's also a matter of faith here uh, but uh, let's look at it um, uh, whereas we, we we understand even from the reading of scripture medicine was there uh, herbs were used and the god put it in there and all that and it can be proven we can even put this as a part of discussion uh, for our subsequent, you know, meetings, uh, and we can really look at it. How was medicine, you know, used those days and today? We can actually discuss that in future. 
uh, uh, how that probably can be an example on how we need to admit surrogacy i really don't know but uh, i think as you can see uh, whether you disagree with those people who are against it i think they also have some merits in their you know the points they've actually brought forward and you can actually clearly see and uh, uh, the fact that you are faithless doesn't make god so he says he's faithful even if you are faithless and i think this question of faith the disciples also were confronted with it and they even asked jesus can you increase our faith and jesus told them if you have faith as small as a mustard seed you can tell this mountain go move you know go into the sea and it will so i think it also mm -hmm. comes down to you know whether we also believe and whether we believe rightly uh, maybe also again for the second time i may also make a submission that uh, maybe also maybe uh, we go, go back to the topic of faith also as well maybe it, from mm -hmm. there we can come here and say uh, where do we really get wrong and why would purity have to take go to hospital and not just believe and you know, speak in tongues the whole night and find herself well in the morning. Uh, there is a lot of, you know, this is a very interesting discussion, by the way. And I think I find merits mm -hmm. uh, on both sides. Uh, but I'm inclined to say there is a lot of uh, demerits, you know, uh, when you are, you are actually trying to support surrogacy. There's a lot of demerits. But I'm, saying, I'm not saying this 100% de delegitimate. Uh, it makes the people who are opposed, uh, who support it to be illegitimate. Um, it's quite an interesting topic and I think I'm just inviting some closing remarks mm -hmm. on this as we mm -hmm. uh, alright, yes. Is that Sister Anna or who is that? I can hear the voice. Oh, in the yes. Um, Brother Sakurai, may I add something? Sure, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Well, let me see. Hold on. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? We can hear you, Anne. Anne, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Yes. I can hear you. Um, Good. Okay, let me share something. Uh, like Sister Purity was saying that I have a medical background. Let me share this information. Sometimes people, they... Sometimes people, they tend to blame God for certain things or trying to question, you know, his power and all that stuff. But I'm going to tell you that, for example, the mind that God has given us is not being used. Our brains are not being used to the extensity of 100%. There have been studies done that people practically function only in 10% of their brain. And look, with all the technology and development that has been done, only with that amount. Imagine if it would be 100%. It would be very dangerous. But let me add, many of the consequences that we see with barrenness nowadays is the result of humanity and what i mean about that coming from the medical perspective nowadays they have made so many vaccinations including when women are pregnant including when uh the child is born i remember when i in america when i was like in elementary school you only had a certain amount of vaccinations, okay? And what happened was that now, the same amount of vaccinations that used to be back then, guess what? Now is triple or quadruple practically, okay? And not only that, when a girl, it's, uh, she gets her menstrual cycle, many parents in America, they put those children 
by the orders of doctors, and I can testify to this, to put the child, the girl, in uh, contracepted pills. And there have been many studies done that is practically sterilizing the females. Because one of the missions that is of the elite is for people to become not fertile, not to be fertile, because their mentality is to depopulate the earth and for only 500,000 people to live. So many of the things regarding barrenness is a result of the evilness of the people that are on top, okay? So whenever that little girl that is, let's say some little girls, they get the menstrual cycle around eight and even nine years old. Imagine with the permission of their parents, they tell the little girl, you know what? You can become sexually active in America. They use it as a normal, but from my background in our culture, we are taught differently. Okay, in America, they put they automatically put the little girl in contraceptive so she will not become pregnant. So guess what? The little girl from eight years old and let's say she gets married 27 years old. She's been using contraceptive since she's been a little girl. And now that she wants to have a family, guess what? She can't. She gets pregnant. Her wound is not able to hold that baby and she gets miscarriages because it's been so long to be having that stuff in their body. And I can testify to this. I know a lot of women, a lot of them, that they started contraceptive pills very young and they put contraceptive pills um, for different reasons. Okay, or sometimes they even get the shot. They have a, a shot. I never got any of those um, because I believe that when a person is uh, married, they shouldn't be using that kind of stuff. You know, that's why you take everything directly to God. And he knows your heart. He knows your mind. He knows your thoughts. Okay. And you can ask him how many children are, you know, is he, you can ask him directly um, regarding those things. Just like you would talk to your best friend, but those contraceptive um, has affected many millions and millions of women worldwide. Yes, it has. And it will continue, especially with those vaccinations. Uh, and I can testify to that. To one of my sons, they tried to, he was what? He had not even hit puberty yet. And uh, he was uh, doing a physical at, uh, for, to play sports. They were going to vaccinate him without my permission, without my consent. Again, it was uh, some vaccination for sexually transmitted disease. I'm and uh, I happened to run because I had left something in the room. You know, I was trying to give my son some privacy, but I had talked to him beforehand. And they were about to give him the vaccination without my consent. And guess what? Those same vaccinations that they said back then, now they are resulting that boys, they're not being able to uh, be... Uh, getting other women uh, pregnant when they when they marry and all that stuff is causing for them to be sterile. The sterilization. So my brothers and sisters, not everything is, you know, because God and all this stuff. No, some things in this world are because of the wicked of the people. Because they try to play God and people since, you know, the word of God says you should know the truth and the truth should set you free. Everybody goes like little lambs into the slaughter. They don't question anything. 
They just receive whatever if the doctor said they tr were trying to do C-section on me. I refuse. I told them, look, if you want to go on vacation, you go on vacation. But my baby's going to come out when he's ready. You cannot. They're trying to induce me. Why? Because they make a lot of money. They make more money with somebody that's having a C-section than someone is just having a vaginal child. So my brothers and sisters, let's use discernment, okay? Only because a doctor comes and they tell you something, don't accept it. I'm telling you, don't. Question everything. Use the discernment of God. Ask the Holy Spirit because it says, when I leave, Jesus says, I should send to you, unto you guys. The counselor, the Holy Spirit, he should show you all things. It, isn't, it didn't say some things. It said all things. We need to use discernment. Many of the things of barrenness is because of all vaccinations, all the different things that they're using, including in food. They're doing it, my brothers and sisters. They are doing it. And how do you cook a frog? Do you cook a frog in boiling water and throw the frog? If you do that, the frog is going to jump. How do you do cook a frog without her knowledge? First, you put the water room temperature. You put in the frog in there. And then you slowly be adding more heat. And but the, then the frog gets all nice and cozy in her jacuzzi. And guess what? It gets relaxed. And then by the time that the frog is going to know she never finds out because she's already cooked and that's exactly what the government is doing not only to american people african people european people in asia in china in every country the devil never changes the the mechanisms he uses the same but in different ways the bible says don't be ignorant of the devices of the enemies. Don't be ignorant. We can't ignore the mechanisms of the enemy. Not everything, you know, I will not question God in that perspective. You know, because I know that his plans are way better than mine. Way better than mine. Because he knows the past, the present, and the future. That's all, my brothers and sisters. So, um, contraceptives, they do cause infertility. Big time. And now I close with that. Thank you, Sister Anna. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, does anyone feel like uh, we will be closing this without maybe probably uh, putting their final mind and remarks on this interesting topic indeed? I have not seen Sister um, Isabella. Isabella, can you make some comments please, if you don't mind? Sister Isabella, are you there? Okay. It doesn't seem like we we are we yes. we have to communicate with Sister Isabella. Brother Matt, uh, Brother Matt disappear, right? Brother Matt disappear, right? Is he still around? I'm here. I'm yeah. here. I'm listening. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, what are your final comments uh, before we bring the curtains down on this? Oh uh, well, final comments before we close the curtain down. We'll go back into the scriptures. It's all about the scriptures. In the Bible, we have a doctor, and his name is Dr. Luke. So medicine, medication, is not actually bad. Because when you see, even, even in the, when the Lord said, the Passover time, 
he told them to eat bitter herbs. Bitter herbs is also medicine. It can heal different, different kinds of sicknesses. So uh, medicine as a whole is not bad. But medicine can also be bad if it's being used for the wrong purpose. Like Sister Purity was saying, there was a brother that came to me right back. And he was scheduled and set for a knee surgery. He's like, oh, I have a knee surgery. My knee hurts. So I have to go do a surgery. The doctors, what they know is medicine. What they know is how to cut. What they know is how to give you injections, steroids, and everything. That's what they know. That's what they are taught. But you, as a child of God, you are taught differently because you have the blood of Jesus Christ. And by his stripes, we are healed. So the brother told me, this, I laid my hands and I prayed. He went the day for the surgery. He went to the hospital. They did a final check on him. The doctor still told him, there's no more need for surgery because your, your knee feels stronger and better than before. And he said, really? And then he asked the doctor, do you believe in miracle? The doctor said, no, I don't believe in miracle. He's like, well, miracle has just taken place. That's why I'm, you're not going to cut me. You're not going to cut my knee today because Jesus Christ has healed me. So faith, healing comes through faith. Sometimes people don't get healed. It's because one reason is because they lack faith. All the people that Christ was praying for, he would ask them, do you believe? Before he prayed, because faith has a lot of power to heal and to set free. And there are certain times you pray, but you don't, have, you don't receive the healing that you want. But also, remember, God said, in your own weakness, I perfect myself. So there are times you're praying and seeking God for healing. It doesn't come. That doesn't mean he doesn't want to heal you. He's teaching you something. He's perfecting himself through you. Should we go to the hospital? Yes, we can go to the hospital and seek for more understanding. But is all, is all medicine, all medical practices in right standing with God? I can tell you right now, no. Not all medical practices are in right standing with God. There are some medical practices that are there that are going contrary to the will of God to prove that they are better and stronger and they know more than God. So we have to be very careful. So it's not wrong to go to the doctor. It's not wrong to say the medicine. It's not wrong to consult somebody. It's not wrong. But when you're doing it, just know that you try to do it in the fear of the Lord. So in regarding to this, just like Sister Anna said, yes, another situation that caused women to be barren is abortion. If the Lord has destined you to have three children or one child, you have pregnant, you became pregnant, you abort that one child, you are locked up. Because you are only destined to have one and you aborted the one. And they say, oh, how come I can't get pregnant? You cannot blame God for that because you have taken the one child you want that God gave you by through abortion. And through abortion can also uh, cause issues with the womb. So my submission here is surrogacy, no surrogacy, let the will of God be done. The way God has said it, Especially when it comes to children. From the beginning, a wife and a, a, a husband meet. Children are to be born in the institution of marriage. Any child born outside the institution of marriage is an error. But we serve a God that is merciful. He can always forgive and set free. But should we take the grace of God because it's abound and continue to live in sin and practice sin and in filthiness? No, we can't do that. Just because the grace of God is there for us and the mercies of God are there for us, we should not go ahead and live in sin. We can't do that. But if that case happens, you born the child out of wedlock, the children belong to God. If you ask him for mercy, he can always forgive. But we can't use it as an advantage and run around with it. So, IVF, surrogacy, my advice will be I will not tell somebody to go and do it personally. I will tell you, go and seek the face of the Lord. If God gives you the go ahead, obey him. But if God did not give you the go ahead, as Sister Peter to say, wait on the Lord. The same commandment that was given on given to Abraham. Abraham, wait. The same commandment is given to you. Those that wait on the Lord, he will renew their strength. They will mount up. So the same commandment is still given to us. The same instruction is given unto us. Wait on the Lord and see what the Lord will do. If it's the will of God for you to be a mother, he will make it possible. If it's not his will for you to be a mother, you can be a mother in different ways.
and be content and be happy because no matter what the situation no matter where you find that stuff the bible says give praise and thanksgiving unto the lord and let not your faith weep trust and depend in him and rely not on your own understanding because this understanding of ours if we rely on it it will cause us to do the wrong things this is my submission actually also been uh, whether you agree or disagree with the uh, point being made by your uh, friend and brother or sister I think I find merits on either side but it goes without saying that uh, there is <coughs> a level which Sarakas is being taken that uh, probably makes it questionable that makes it um the whole thing comes into you know some form of like uh, people you know like the way you take the topic of discussion around femininity and and um, and uh, and abortion because if you hear the arguments around abortion and I do ho I think it's a topic which we know so well I think there is what you will also get arguments that people will tell you that um, <coughs> there is good and bad abortion and I think there is also merits in all that all right we understand the medical uh, you know from a medical perspective I think we've always been made to understand that if the risk of the mother losing his, her life is anything to go by I think it has always been put forward that it's safe and it's acceptable to abort. Uh, but we all understand also as well that there is abortion, the way we know it, the way it's being practiced in America and uh, other countries around the world, that is totally unacceptable. Um, in fact, like they have even gone ahead to define um, at how many weeks and or how many days uh, can you legally procure an abortion it's a hotly contested topic that will actually even dominate the campaign the next presidential campaign in the United States um, it is still it's, it's very unfortunate that even in our day and age we haven't even settled on a basic you know discussion at, around the topic of sex but uh, that's the same I think uh, Sister Purity tried to put forward Mm, the medical aspect of it uh, for someone who is not able to have a child and uh, surrogacy becomes the only hope that they have that they need probably and actually if I listen to her she said it's probably their answered prayer like if God if they have been praying to God for a child that this becomes a way God is answering um, well that is still subject to discussion and subject to you know your opinion around it but I think it's been quite an interesting topic and uh, first of all I want to appreciate all of you uh, we have a little bit of some technicalities here and there especially on sound trying to mess up and I think it's a bit understandable being our life our, our first live stream uh, I was trying to see exactly how this could probably turn out but I think it's not really been uh, very bad uh, but I think the next one could be far much better. It should, maybe I need to prepare more. We need to do more. And even more importantly, I want to thank God because uh, sometimes we put this, you know, we put our minds on things and we try to see exactly how those things can really come around. But it takes the grace of God to make them happen. And uh, thus far, the little that we have actually done, we give glory to God and we appreciate so much that he has led us to this far i hope and pray that this is just by the beginning of our live streaming and uh, and i hope that we can be able to grow even our knowledge our understanding uh, around this and uh, maybe also grow in terms of 
the equipment that probably we need to use, the tools that actually we need to have our hands on so that we can make even future live stream to be more seamless, to be even better, uh, so that uh, they can be even a better blessing to the body of Christ. So, um, once again, thank you. And uh, uh, we will, of course, uh, end this with a word of prayer. And uh, I think at this moment, I will just also ask you, as we always da do, uh, that we unmute our microphones so that we can get into a moment of prayer. But I think the only thing that I cannot thank you for is that you denied me your faces. This is a video transmission, but you failed, uh, except for Brother Matt. At least I got a bit of that, and uh, I tried to put it on the screen. But the rest of the people, it could be either one. Uh, the camera phones are not working or at least they don't work on Fridays they freeze you know 9 p.m. Kenyan time and they become you know you know they can't be able to be used and uh, probably at the end of this live stream those cameras will be working very well so may I request that in our subsequent uh, live streams you give me your faces please if you don't mind this will help uh, you know put the face to your, you know, good discussions, good contributions, and it will probably help you, uh, you know, everyone who is probably going to be watching this in future. Uh, that may not take much time on that. Uh, I was actually waiting that we unmute our microphones, and let me see how many of that, uh, many of us have done that. Um, I'm yet to see. Um, still waiting for the microphones to be unmuted so that we can begin our discussion sorry we can begin our prayers and uh, bring this to an end thank you brother Kevin I hope everyone else will do so so can I just request that uh, once you have actually muted your microphone uh, we get into a moment of prayer a brief moment of prayer and uh, at the end of this we will be bringing to an end um, one of the things oh, brother Zach. yes yes brother, brother Kevin you forgot to ask for the female version of Steve Hawking today I forgot to, for, to ask for the female version of Stephen Hawking where is she <laughs> the female part of Stephen Hawking uh, did you say that the female version the female version of Stephen Hawking. Please, I think there are so many things on my head. <laughs> Can you just be clear? <laughs> that is Sister Ivy. Uh, Ivy. Sister Ivy. Sister Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Ivy, apparently, where is she? Is she online with us now? I don't seem to see her. <laughs> Maybe Purity can tell us. <coughs> Sorry. Purity, where is Sister Ivy? Brother Zach, I'm following. Uh, oh, <coughs> she, I she's there. No, we, we can't phone. pray without. Now, Sister Ivy, you've been so silent. We have had this in the last almost nearly two hours. And uh, it's only prudent that we give you some few minutes to really put your mind on this. And that will be very much appreciated. What do you think? Brother Zach, I'm the one who asked the question. <laughs> You ask the question, but now we also want your views. How about that? I I did not have a view. That's why I asked. <laughs> it was a little bit confusing, but I have listened to all your opinions. Yeah. And I remember last time actually. I think so after yeah, listening, no, so after listening to all the opinions, what what do you what do you where, where's your conviction? Where do you stand now? I think that there are more reasons why uh, it's wrong than the ones why it is okay to do it. That's what I've concluded. I'm sure you'll have to choose whether you'll be spending that house or you spend at the neighbors. Uh, but uh, you see, <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine what will be happening. Someone will be pinched. You know, you don't have to say that. You don't have to say that. You know all that but you see um sister uh, i asked you previously sister ivy 
uh, will you, you know, carry someone's baby? I, I think that was in our chat. I think you came to my private chat on this. Yeah. And uh, I asked yeah. you, will you carry someone's baby? And for this matter, like uh, uh, Sister Beauty says, you know, I'm peace with the gospel. I need to be preaching the gospel. I think it's only prudent that I, if you carry my baby, you know, uh, you can do that. Uh, can you do that? If they give me one billion. <laughs> <laughs> you see, now it comes down to a financial motivation right there. So <laughs> that, that, that's that's one thing that I actually mentioned at the very beginning, that the, the whole issue of sarcasm, there is an element of financial, you know, between those who have and those who do not. But I also listened to Sister Purity. She made some very nice comments. From a medical perspective, someone who is not able to give birth, you know, if you relate that to even the safe and legally accepted abortion, you could probably find some merit in all that. But I think, um, well, it is the way it is. And uh, I hope that whether you stand on one side, probably you have also listened to the other side and, and uh, benefited a little bit more on that. Okay. Yes, uh, I have. Yes. Uh, do you have something more to say, Sister Ivy? Or we can uh, now get into a moment of prayer. We can get to prayer. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. So we can now unmute our microphone. Uh, that is if you've not already done so. And if actually you need some specific instructions on how to do it, you can easily do that on your phone. There is a, microf a microphone icon. And when you, you, you press it, it will turn to, I don't know, some color, maybe green or... I don't know if it's light blue or whatever. Uh, that will just mean that you're alive. So can we take this moment uh, to thank God first? I will make this as a prayer request that uh, may he grow, that from the little that we are doing, let it grow, that let this message that we are trying to share, let it reach out to people out there and uh, that he may actually give us the ways, the capability, the understanding, the wisdom on how we need actually to go around all this uh, we are learning how to do it we actually i'm not so sure exactly that's how we are supposed to do it the way we did it today but i think as we continue we will be more ingenious we will find out even more better ways on how we need to go around this so uh it's a learning thing and no one gets it the first time and uh, the best thing is that probably we are doing it we are getting into it and uh, how, however many mistakes we make, I think that should not really derail us. That should not discourage us. I think we can do better than the way we have done today. So can we just get into a moment of prayer? And maybe if someone has some prayer request. And um, uh, also to our Facebook family. Uh, today we only streamed actually on Facebook. Uh, whereas I had the capability to put this on YouTube as well. Uh, it's just because I was a bit more worried about the mistakes and all that. Uh, but next time, actually, uh, on Facebook, I want just to make it very clear here is that when people shall be making the comments, the comments shall also be streaming on the screen. Uh, I've been trying to make some work around on that. I think next time I'll be better prepared. So it will be easier for them also to feel and be part of the conversation. And we're also looking forward on how they can also make in, you know, those live calls you know they can also contribute i think someone one person actually came to my inbox and asked how can they join in the telegram call and uh, i gave them the link uh, and all that uh, but i haven't seen them coming live and all that so uh, i think uh, that's how it all starts it's uh, you know baby steps one at a time but basically that's what it all takes to get where we need to go so let's uh, get into a moment of prayer and uh, before i do that maybe someone has an, another prayer request maybe uh, that uh, they are also feel comfortable and uh, maybe it's not too personal that it's being broadcast and all that at least in the previous time i remember sister anna was like this is like a family for us we don't need to broadcast our personages so just say what probably may be more comfortable or at least something that's not even specifically personal <clears throat> Let's pray from the book of First Corinthians, chapter seven, verse sure. one. Oh, the Lord says, "Are we all filthiness?" Mm -hmm. First Corinthians, seven, second, second Corinthians, seven, verse one. Yes. The Lord is asking us, all the body of Christ, all over the world, to put our all filthiness 
loss of the flesh, loss of the eyes, everything that caused us to stray away from him and to perfect our holiness in fear of God, not in fear of hell, not in fear of people, but let's perfect our holiness in the fear of God. Thank you, Brother Matt. Anyone else? Um, may I ask something regarding uh, the faith uh, when it talks about the size of a mustard seed? One thing that we need to remember regarding the mustard seed is that if you study the qualities of a mustard seed is the shell that the mustard seed has. And it's not really about how big or the size of the of the seed is, but the focus on the shell, the protection that that seed has. The shell is very, it can stand heat. It can stand um, like crushing and stuff. It can, it's like a very strong shell. So, our faith but but once it's planted and it opens up and it breaks out of the shell the tree uh grows very rapidly and jesus christ when he was referring to the mustard seed the focus is that our faith must have the same qualities that the seed of a mustard seed has that it can stand heat. How many of us have been going through tribulations or mm -hmm. afflictions or sickness or disease or anything like that? Just like the mustard seed. And the mustard seed, it can stand very, very hard things. But once it's planted, it grows very fast. That's the quality that God is looking for us. For us that whenever you're facing trials, tribulation, afflictions, temptations, or whatever it is, or sickness or disease, for us to remember that the mustard seed, it can endure different, um, different obstacles. But then once it's planted, it grows really fast. And that's the way that our faith should be. Really, really hard shell that it protects and it shields what's inside. You know, that's what we need to do. The shell of the, of the, um, of the mustard seed, it can represent the shield and the protection that God has in us that is protecting the inside of us, is protecting our hearts, our mind, our will, our emotions. But then once it's planted, it grows rapidly. It bears fruit. And that that is exactly what God wants in our lives for us to bear fruit. Remember, we need to be rooted in just like the book of Colossians. We need to be so rooted and entangled with God that nothing will move us. The heat won't move us just like the mustard seed because the protection and the shield. Just remember uh, in um, regarding the olives. The olives have oil, but in order for you to receive the oil, the oil represents anointing. It must be crushed. As children of God, we will be crushed to take the best thing that is inside of us. So we can just bear fruit, just like the mustard seed, that once we are planted, we're going to grow and we're going to be rooted in Christ. Just like the tree planted by the waters, that we will bear fruit. And if heat comes, we will always stay green. I pass the time to you, my brothers. Thank you. Uh, I think, thank you for that prayer request. Uh, we got it. Um, this program is like the master seed. 
and may it grow to a big tree put on the leaves put on some beautiful fruit and become the habitation of so many birds and fill the entire earth all the four corners of the earth in Jesus name can we pray now I think it's now good time we need to pray and uh, bring this to an end pray. father in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ we bless your name all that for your faithfulness right from the beginning and now here we are our King of glory that Lord you have led us through the discussion that all we have had to share O King of glory in this place in this live stream Almighty Father may it O God cause an impact cause a spiritual awakening O God out of there Really change many really lives in the name of Christ and Jesus. The understanding of God. Father Lord, to your children, wherever we have, whatever we are talking about today, we're pressing in this meeting. That we do not understand thoroughly. That we don't have a clear conviction about it. But I help us to understand. But I help us to understand. But I help us to understand. But I help us to understand in the name of Christ Jesus. Help us to understand, oh God. No, we need to shoot. Oh God, Father, we need your truth, oh God. Lord, we need it to talk about in our life. Father, we pray for your truth, oh God. We pray for your truth, we pray for your truth, oh God. Let your truth, oh God, reign in our life in the name of Christ Jesus. Let the truth of God reign in our life in the name of children, our brothers and sisters and all over the world. We pray for your truth to reign, oh God. Father, we pray, oh God Almighty. That, King of that oh God, we will take our all filthiness, give us the grace to put our all filthiness, filthiness that drive the glory of God out of us, the filth that drive the Holy Spirit of us, the filth that God cause us to resist to the true word of God. But I will pray, oh, and give us the grace to put away and those secrets are such that filthiness in the name of Christ Jesus. My Father and my God, the creator of the heaven and earth, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We pray, oh, God, you help us to perfect our wholeness in the the reverence of God. Help us to perfect our wholeness in the reverence of God. Help us to perfect our wholeness in the reverence of God. Help us to perfect our wholeness in the reverence of God in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray, oh God, that you help us, oh God, to understand, to understand the truth, oh God, you have given unto us in the name of Jesus. Help us to understand the truth, oh God. The truth about your word. The truth about your word in the name of Christ Jesus. And I will thank you. And I will bless you. We glorify you. We give you praise, honor, and adoration. Our dear Father who art in heaven. Father, as we have started, O oh God. God, I pray over you establish this ministry. You establish the group, O oh God. You establish the group, O oh God, in the name of Christ Jesus. Lord, establish the glory, O God. Establish the group, O God, in your glory, in the name of Christ Establish your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we worship you. Father, we bless you. Father, Lord, we pray for the sick. Let the sick be healed. The downcast, let them be comforted. The depressed, oh God, uplift them, Father. Those that are going to one condition or the other, Lord, I pray, oh God, you intervene. Those that are in confusion, Lord, take that confusion away and bring them to clear conscience and common sense, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, oh God, for those that are seeking for joy and payment. Provide for them, oh Lord, in the name of Christ Jesus. Those that need your financial support. Support, support them, Lord. Those are looking for your approval, your will, oh God. Let your will be them. Those are seeking for children. Father, I pray, oh God, you will heal them. You provide them. Bless, bless their womb, Lord. Bless the plant. Let the man be faster. Let the man be faster. Lord, bless the womb. Heal the womb, oh God, in the name of Christ Jesus. But I will give you all the glory. We give you all the praise, oh God. Lord, those are so sick, very grace. I pray, oh God, for your conviction. If they should continue or if they stop, Lord, reveal unto them, oh God, in the name of Christ Jesus. Take out the confusion and the conspiracy over in the body of Christ in Jesus' name, over IVF, uh, sorry, Jesse, in the name of Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father, we oh, bless you. We give you glory, we give you praise, we give you honor and adoration, Lord. Thank you, Father, for everything you have done for us, and thank you for all you continue to do for us, Lord. In Jesus Christ, I worship you, I bless you, I praise you, I honor you and adore you, and magnify your full name in Christ our Lord Jesus. We will commit the upper meat into your hands, O God, we pray over you, move mightily, it will be better and greater than today, and all glory and honor will be given unto you, O Father, in Jesus Christ. All of it is done for your own glory, for your own purpose, O Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, everyone.
uh, we really appreciate. Uh, I think for the purpose of uh, you know sharing with our community on the internet, we'll uh, I will be asking that we decide make a decision on the topic we need to discuss at least some few days before the live stream. It will help you know for me to prepare maybe some meaningful presentations, uh, maybe verses, and actually also if you plan to use a specific verse and maybe it needs to be probably your anchor, you can share that. And uh, I think also I will need some of your pictures, some good pictures of course. And I think this is the moment uh, my sister, you know, sister Ivo, uh, Ivy needs to really you know, hear because uh, the last picture I have of her is at 25% of her face, a quarter of her face. So uh, we ask that she, she becomes the first person to share with me the picture. If that's if she's not willing to give me the video, the live stream, that would be very much appreciated. So, for the purposes of our, for the purposes of our uh, live stream and those who are following online, I will just please ask you to hold on for like three minutes as we wind up the stream. Uh, during this time, uh, your microphone will not be working. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 